Hockey Talk continues on 1440 and 92.1 WNFL. And welcome back to Hockey Talk here on WNFL. Jason Novick along with Pat Mickish. We just got done with David Carl. I felt like we could talk to him for a long time. He has got a bright future. He's assistant coach for the Denver Pioneers. Of course, he was an assistant here under head coach and general manager Derek Lalone with the Green Bay Gamblers, which you look at Derek Lalone, it's his second year in Toledo. He was named the USHL Coach of the Year in 2012 for the Gamblers, the ECHL Coach of the Year 2014 for the Walleye. He was the assistant coach for Team USA. Uh, when they won the gold medal at the World Junior A Challenge in 2012, he was a head coach in 2013. Right now, his team is in first place in the North at 24, 11, and one. In their last 10 games, seven and three. Derek, thanks for joining us. That is a mouthful. You have a heck of a resume, my friend. It's been good. It's uh, get a really good uh, team with a lot of good players, and then uh, those are, that's what happens when you get a resume like that. Well, let's talk about uh, this season and last season in Toledo. You got your team in first place once again, but last year you have a tendency to do that. You take a team and you have a, a historic turnaround, and last year the 57-point improvement from the year prior to that. I mean, that's a credit to you and your staff knowing that you guys have players that shift up and down, and it's just a different environment than the USHL. It is a lot different, and, and uh, you know my, my first head coaching experience was in Green Bay. It was a lot different in that a winning culture, uh, a very successful team with high expectations was already in place. Uh, here was a different challenge in that uh, we were dead last, and that's why they made the coaching change, and that was somewhat uh, what was attractive about um, the job. I knew the Red Wings do a good job with their depth, so we're always going to get four, five, six quality uh, contract players with us at any time. And um, then I went out and got guys that wanted to be team first, winning guys. It was a lot of USHL, a lot of college guys. I trusted uh, what they went through, and I trusted um, the environment they were in, and it was just a magical, special type season. Uh, very similar to our championship season in green bay it's something uh, no one can ever take away from us we'll always have it was exciting you guys were the regular season champions last year the postseason was a little bit of a grind for you guys you're the first team in the east coast hockey league history to play three game sevens in a single playoff year and route to reaching the conference championship that is something it is and it's just it's the reality of this league it's, it's funny you know we end up the number one seed we play the number eight seed um, and just the reality was we still had the Grand Rapids Giffords were still playing, the um, Detroit Red Wings were still playing, and Wheeling was a, um, a wilkes Bear Scranton, and uh, Hamilton affiliate, and Hamilton got knocked out. Um, so in reality, you know, we probably had four or five guys missing. They were a better lineup than us. Two of their D-men or eight just got named AHL All-Stars. It's just the luck of this league sometimes, and um, we ended up at the end of the season, Jeff Blaschel literally game seven, sent us Martin Furk, uh, and Scott Zarnow was in two all-stars at our level. And then uh, Syracuse got bounced. Uh, we got Jared Nightingale back. Uh, it's amazing how just you're kind of at the mercy of who comes down and who doesn't. But it was an awesome run. Um, the city uh, is a huge sports town, very similar to Green Bay uh, when, when you're winning and I see the you guys, the success they're having there this year. The numbers are up and everything. Um, two great organizations. People are going to come, but when you're winning and you're on to something special, uh, they'll come out. It was just it was an awesome run. It was exciting, great experience. Derek Pat here. Just tell us a little bit about Toledo. I know they've got the minor league baseball team, the walleye. It, it just seems like whatever sports team they have there, it's just a huge deal. It's a sneaky little secret. First and <laughs> foremost, uh, we are a business model very similar to the Green Bay Gamblers. Uh, we have a company, and it's, and it's community owned, that owns us, the Toledo Walleye and uh, the Toledo Mudheads. And when it's just, it's when people, um, that nonprofit model, when they're about the fans, they're about the individual players, and you don't have that owner kind of counting every single cent. Um, special things can be done and the market is extremely surprised um, my wife and i in that it's a fairly big city you're probably four hundred thousand, probably a million uh when you're talking to the suburbs all the way down to bowling green uh you know we're still 40 minutes from detroit 
um, and they love their their minor league sports. I, I don't know if there's a better minor league sports town where the, where the biggest show in town or you know, our games are on TV. Uh, we are an NHL. We are a major baseball team in this market, and the Mud Hens constantly get ten, eleven thousand a night. We're averaging over seven thousand a night. It's That's a amazing. unique city. It's a special city, and um, it's been a pleasant surprise. Now, I have one thing, you know, bringing your, ba- your time back here to Green Bay. You spent three seasons here with the Green Bay Gamblers before you made that jump. You're one of the rare coaches that can jump from the USHL into a professional league. But, you know, I, I'm baffled at, you know, guys like John Cooper, Jeff Blaschel, um, Hartzell, and, and all these guys um, that have come through the USHL. And, Derek, you're one of them. But, the pedigree of coaches is amazing and yet you put you etched your mark in the ushl that 2011-12 season you guys had the best season in ushl history and pat was on that staff as well 47 9 and 4 in capture in route and capturing both the regular season championship and the clark cup championship talk about how special that season was for you guys well, it, it, it was an amazing type season, and I think you touched on it. It, it is an unbelievably good league. It's an unbelievably hard league uh, to win in. Uh, I grew so much uh, in my time there, and, and to see some coaches go in the league, and everyone says the same thing. I've seen, I've, you know, I talked to Jason Lambers, uh, Billy McCall, these guys. It's one thing to know the league uh, from afar, but to coach in it night in and night out is truly an amazing league. And That was just an amazing team. Um, it's hard to get a winning culture, but once you have that winning culture, it can be special. And just that team had a swagger to it. Um, you know, you talk to Mick, I think we did a good job that year um, in being detailed and, and having the right uh, systems and structure. But we worked a lot on just our mentality and, and, and hardening that team for a game five win it all against Waterloo uh, for moments like that. You know, such a mature group. Uh, it was such great buy-in. I, and what's exciting about this team, and, you know, who knows? It's still going to be in time. And, and you've seen some USHL championship teams. You look back on some USHL championship teams, and you see a lot of special players, NHL-type players. And, and I still think that team may um, grade out and it may produce some NHLers. But when you look at it, it was a team first. I mean, our second line in the playoffs that year was Grant Arnold's uh, C.J. Ike and uh, Kyle Novak, and those guys are nowhere near ever going to be in the National Hockey League. Uh, yeah, Sammy Hare, uh, a normal porter, obviously Detroit line that year. Um, you know, outside of probably Jordan Schmaltz, who I believe uh, will play in the NHL, and I still hope some of those guys will their way in. That was just a special junior team and special group. Uh, and then the exciting thing, it was team first every single day. And that's why we had the season we did. You know, I got to say, you set the benchmark because uh, in talking with other members of the USHL right now, they all try to compare their team to that team, 2011-2012 Green Bay Gamblers team that won it all. Is that team up to that point? I don't think there will ever be a team. Uh, with that much talent, that well coached with you and Pat that went through that as easy as they did. I mean, you guys set a record for road wins, 25 straight road wins. That's impossible to do in this day and age in sports. It will be hard to replicate, especially, I I think, uh, and the league was really good at that time. Uh, But even in my third year, the league had improved uh, to now where this league is right now. Um, it's an improved league from where it was four or five years ago. It's just a reality of parity. Um, and even uh, we did a, I think we did a very good, we, I think we built that team uh, in the front office. I mean, we, we were ahead of the curve in, in the draft that year uh, with our experience with John Burkhart when the Mick took over the draft. Uh, I just think we did a better job than a lot of teams. I don't know if there's very few teams that, you know, there is a difference in, in some people, what they're doing in the draft this day and age, but everyone, you know, knows what they're doing. Everyone's putting their resources in that area. We were kind of ahead of that. So to put a team together like that, uh, and then you can still do everything right uh, with your draft, but, you know, I think we were probably, and you can probably talk to Mick, we were probably even taken back with how special each of those individual kids. We knew we were getting good players, but every single one of them was a winner and special. We put it all together. That's just what you get in one of those type of seasons. 
Well, Derek, tell us a little bit about this year's team. Uh, obviously, how many guys do you have back from last year? You know, how is it built for the playoffs? Obviously, wait and see from Grand Rapids, Detroit, everything. But how do you like the group? I like the group a lot. And, and last year, uh, we had a typical ups and downs and call-ups and injuries that everyone goes through in this league, but nothing like this year. What's been most impressive about this team is we have found a way to win with every single lineup we've had. I think that bodes well. Uh, I took this team over a year ago. I, I kept one player, one returning player, uh, and built a culture. And uh, the good thing about this year, we, we returned about six or seven guys. And with those six or seven guys with that nucleus, anyone that comes in that room now has been uh, a winner and, and a good kid. And, and I think we're starting to build that culture again. Uh, the reality is the Red Wings are making the playoffs. The Grand Rapids Griffins are making the playoffs, so we're not going to get um, that break of having a bunch of guys down at the same time. But I still think we have a chance. We're probably a little heavier than what we were last year. Um, we were very skilled last year um, and very similar type of player. But just I wouldn't say we got lucky, but a first-year player like Tyler Secure that played at Dartmouth, a first-year player like Austin Woodridge who played at Notre Dame, um, you know, those guys are good players, but they're heavy type players too at 6'2", 6'3", you know, 212 pounds. We've probably spent a little more time with the puck than we did last year in the offensive zone. But last year it was all transition. So uh, we've had a chance. There's no doubt. So obviously you got to get a little bit lucky in this league, but I think uh, we're going to be right there in the end. Well, Derek, we appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the way. I know you're going to do good things with uh, the Toledo Walleye like you did with the Green Bay Gamblers. So we definitely appreciate your time, and good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Keep it rolling there. Uh, it's, it's exciting to watch uh, what you guys got going on there. I know it's going to make a special season there, too. So keep it going. Talk to you later. All right. Appreciate it. That's former Green Bay Gamblers head coach and general manager Derek Lone. We're going to step out for a break with a quick wrap-up coming up. This is Hockey Talk on 